so good morning students so now we'll be uh, starting with the support vector machine okay so support vector machine is a famous algorithm okay machine learning algorithm which is used for doing the classifications already uh, always it is applied for the classification kind of your problem so this algorithm is uh, so famous in research that most of the people will be using this for doing the binary, cla binary classification or multi uh, multi class classification okay so because one advantage is that so it can support even the uh, data is little noisy okay so even then it is going to uh, make the classification so where the acceptable amount of your accuracy is uh, considered Okay, so here it is actually mathematically challenging that. Okay, so support vector machine is mathematically rigorous uh, machine learning technique to build a linear binary classifier. So like that, uh, you, we have seen in the regression problems and all. So in the same way, this is also mathematically uh, uh, iteratively developed. Okay, so it is a, a technique okay, which is used for doing the linear binary classification. So it creates a hyperplane. Okay, always it is generating a hyperplane in a high dimensional space so that can be accurately sliced uh, a data set into two segments uh, according to the desired objective so that means so you are drawing a plane a hyperplane okay so like this so we'll just see the figure you can understand that okay so we draw a hyperplane so where we have one uh, set of points of belonging to one class on one side and another set of points belonging to another class on the other side so in this way we are going to draw the hyperplane okay so now here the algorithms for developing the classifiers can be uh, mathematically challenging okay so always it is very challenging to develop the algorithm so svms are a popular since okay so they are the state of art for many practical problems like we are going to use it for uh, identifying the spam emails and other text mining applications and uh, so on so take an example like uh, you have a case studies where we want to predict uh, whether the uh, person is having prostate cancer or not having a prostate cancer. So prostate cancer is a kind of cancer normally seen in the uh, men. Okay. So here uh, how they are uh, doing is what set of features we are going to use as uh, the samples of a protein. Okay. So protein uh, as a biomarker. So biomarker why you call it as a see markers are not, nothing the set of features. Okay? If one particular feature using one particular features if you are able to identify the target label then you call that as a uh, marker. Okay? So why we are calling that as a biomarker is okay. So these are the readings okay, of uh, which are taken from the biological test. Okay? Maybe like uh, you are getting it from the samples of your blood. Okay. So, from that you are taking lots of variables. So, since they are, these features are extracted are nothing but a outcome of your uh, reading of your uh, some biological uh, samples. Okay. So, this is why we call that as a biomarkers. Okay. So, mass spectrography technology is being used to generate a fast and efficient profile of protein content of your complex samples okay so some set technology called as a spectrometer technology we use so which is used to generate a fast and efficient profile of a protein content of your uh, samples okay so you are normally taking 40,000 samples that constitutes a profile for a protein sample so data analytics can be used for narrowing the uh, search space for protein biomarker cancer uh, biomarker uh, candidate. So that means uh, here 40,000 variables are very large. Okay? So to search yeah. from that particular space and doing the calculation is actually uh, very difficult. Okay? So if you reduce this particular space, okay? so now you can easily uh, uh, make the more uh, efficient production. Okay? So that is done like suppose if, if from 40,000, okay, if I am having only 5,000 features, okay? Uh, which are also giving me the good amount of accuracy. So then what I can do, I can just neglect the rest of the 35,000 features. Okay? Though, though the 40,000 features uh, are available size, uh, are classifying okay, the data into uh, uh, when present the data cancer is present or not present. But okay, the amount of data processing is very large and requires more computations and memory there. Okay. So, if you selectively reduce, okay, identify some very key features that are sufficient enough to do the classification, okay, then the amount of computation and memory requirements will be reduced drastically. Okay. So, that can be done by using the, you can narrow the search space for 
okay this one by using the data analytics okay so you have certain techniques called as a feature selection technique okay so feature selection techniques what it is doing trial by trial trial by uh, trial so it is selecting the set of features so you say you may say it is working out with some combination of features and trying to find out what is accuracy okay again works out with another set of features and trying to classify the accuracy so in that way it is doing it and data analytics can be uh, used okay, and uh, to narrow this uh, search for the space for the protein biomarker candidates so now for earlier we were using 40000 now only 5000s are enough okay, you can still have advanced uh, feature selection techniques okay, and see here what very uh, amount of accuracy should not vary okay so now 40,000 is giving me the good amount of figures like 90%, 95% accuracy. I am getting to classify the things. Okay, so like that. Okay, uh, you are narrowing the search space for protein biomarkers. So this there may be other data uh, techniques. Okay, which are which can reduce the uh, amount of data whatever you are going to use. So the spectra can be used to identify the peaks on certain biomarkers. Okay, so this spectra. Uh, collection of features so this we are calling that as a spectra so this is i used to identify the peaks on certain biomarkers so that means that so when we use when we were using 40000 you may think that you are getting a accuracy of some 40 40% 40 accuracy okay so when we reduce down to few more 30 uh, 15000 so we increase the accuracy of our 60% okay if you are using 5000 features uh, very important features we were now getting 90 percent 95 percent accuracy so now you are at the peak okay this spectra is identifying the peaks okay peaks means you are uh, at the, you are getting the greatest accuracy on certain biomarkers okay so whose intensity correlate with a particular outcome variable so this intensity whatever we are getting so this is correlating with a particular output variable that is nothing but your prostate cancer that is nothing but your target variable so this 5000 uh, features are sufficient enough and which is giving you the good amount of accuracy okay and uh, helping you to classify okay, uh, identify it is a prostate cancer or it is not a prostate cancer okay so now we'll see what is your SVM model. So SVM is a classifier function in a high dimensional space that defines the decision boundary between the two classes. Okay. So the model is always a function, is a classifier function in, okay, which is in the high dimensional space. So it's a classifier function in high dimensional space so that it is going to define the boundary. Okay. The main uh, theme of SVM is so always defining the boundaries between the two classes see the boundaries can be linear collinear or something like that okay so that defines the decision boundary within the two classes the support vectors are the data points that define the gutters okay or the boundary conditions on either side of your hyperplane for each of the two classes and okay? the support vectors what we are going to use okay uh, are the uh, points which are lying on the gutter line so gutter line is actually the line which we draw which we draw near the uh, hyperplane okay in case of linear the optimal hyperplane what we get so oppose uh, in parallel to that we draw a line called as a gutter line so on each side one gutter line on one side of class and the gutter line on the other side of class so gutter line always contains the point some of the points of the particular class Okay, so this is how we are going to SVM is a classifier function in the high dimensional space. We always that is always trying to generate the hyperplane or a boundary, the boundary which will be supporting one class from the other class. Okay, that's a definition. Always remember SVM means it is always generating a boundary. Okay, it is there in the high dimensional space generating a boundary. That boundary has to separate between the separate the points of two classes okay so if it is linear one on one side another on other side so hyperplane okay in geometry hyperplane is a subspace whose dimension is one less than that of its ambient space okay so always hyperplane if you are having dimension is n so your hyperplane is one less than that so if your high dimension space is three then your hyperplane will be two dimension okay so if your uh, space is two then your hyperplane will be one dimension so this notion can be used in general space okay so uh, in that uh, you're going to define the hyperplane okay so if you're having n dimension your uh, subspace will be of your n minus one okay? 
so now uh, here this is a simple example where we have plotted the uh, points of one class so this circle is representing the points of one class so squares are representing the points of the another class okay so now suppose uh, here we need to find a plane okay so which is separating the if you're using svm you are just finding a plane okay so which is separating the one class from the another class okay so here you can see that so we are having a hyperplane drawn okay this is a hyperplane which is drawn okay so now this is going to separate this particular class and this particular class okay now this is a hard line what we are calling it as a hyperplane so you have another dotted line drawn okay so this is called a gutter so we have one gutter for one class another gutter for another class okay so this uh, gutter is covering the points on the uh, points of the particular class so this points is there here Uh, lying on this gutter and this point is also there on the lying on the gutter okay so we draw the hyperplane in such a way that okay the distance between these two lines okay uh, or the distance between these two points of the either class should be maximum okay see that is the largest distance to near data, data point should be maximum so you are saying svm takes the widest street so if you are considering this as a street so the street this street should be wide enough okay so it you are calling that as a wider street okay approach to demarcate the two classes okay so to demarcate the two classes always we try we are trying to find the wider street between these okay so this point from this point to this point okay so from this point to this point okay this point is a, a points belonging to one, one class this point is a point belonging to another class so you need to get the uh widest uh, margin between these two so widest street between these two that is largest distance to the uh nearest data points of the either class okay so now here i can draw the hyperplane uh, in this fashion also when you say saying that all the points are here i can draw the uh plane like this also okay but okay yeah, the always the distance between this point to this point is not maximum Okay. so you can draw the plane like this also because all the points are lying on the either side okay so the distance between this point to this point is not maximum okay so draw the hyperplane in such a way that the distance between these points are maximum okay so that is the thing okay so the hard line is a uh, optimal hyperplane so hard line in the previous figure okay is a optimal hyperplane so the dotted line okay what we are going to see is a uh gutters on the side of two classes the gap between the gutters is a maximum or widest margin so the classifier hyperplane is defined by only those points that fall on the gutters on both sides so that means the hyperplane is always a uh, uh, defined by the points lying on the uh, points that fall on the gutters on the both sides so this hyperplane the definition of this hyperplane okay the definition of this hyperplane is defined by these two gutters okay so the classifier is defined by only those points that fall on the gutters on both uh, both points so these points we are calling as a support vector okay so you see that these the points okay what we are going to have here on this line are called as a support vector okay so that support vectors always help us to make the classification of classifications of your test sample okay now abstract uh, lee suppose that the training data of n points okay is uh, xy xi comma yi and so on okay so where xi represents the p value and uh, p value vector of point i and yi is uh, its binary class value which is a positive class or a negative class so p value means is actually the probability a uh, value of that particular feature okay so that is going to uh, i mean uh, relate with a null hypothesis so that means the if i am having a feature like marks okay so the probability of marks of a particular student so see if i am having a hypothesis okay i say that null hypothesis is okay i am having a hypothesis h not so where i am saying that the hypothesis is saying that okay all the students above 90% will be placed in the campus so this is my hypothesis okay so now i may also have okay 
another hypothesis alternative hypothesis all the students okay, so above 75 percent with a bias that they are having some skills okay so which are employable okay so will be placed in the campus this is an alternative hypothesis okay so hypothesis here I am saying that all the students who are having the marks 90% and above okay, will be placed in the campus. So this is my hypothesis what I have assumed. Sometimes hypothesis may be true or may not be true also. Okay? So probability uh, p-value is the strength of the evidence. Okay? What the strength uh, of the evidence in support of your null hypothesis. Here the strength is the marks. Okay? Now p-value means always a probability of a value of your feature which is satisfying your uh, null hypothesis. Null hypothesis, basic hypothesis what we assume. So, p-value is always measuring the strength of the evidence in support of your null hypothesis. Okay. Uh, p-value is a uh, probability of observing a test statistics. Okay. So, as extreme as s. So, assuming null hypothesis is true. So, what we do, we uh, like for everything we keep a threshold. Okay. So, if the p-value is less, less than the significant uh, level, then we reject the null hypothesis okay so if a uh, marks is less than 90 percent we are going to reject that this hypothesis and we are going to construct this hypothesis okay if the marks is less than 90 percent if it is 85 percent i say that okay your hypothesis is not true so we are going to reject the null hypothesis okay so this is like p value always you keep a threshold value so if it is above less than that threshold you are going to reject the hypothesis if it is greater than that th threshold so you are going to Accept the hypothesis. Okay. So now here, assume that the data is indeed uh, linear separable. Linear separable means what? Okay. So we have already seen that. Okay. So linear separable means. Okay. So that all the data points are lying one side of the hyperplane. Okay. Of one class, all the data points belonging to other class are lying on the other side of your hyperplane. So then we say that the data is linearly separable. Okay, now when the data is linearly separable, so the classifier hyperplane okay, is defined by a set of data points, so which is subset of your training data. So we are having W into X plus B is equal to 0. Okay. So where W is a normal vector to the hyperplane. So where W is a normal vector, what we are going to have with the hyperplane. So W is a set of your vectors or weights which is there for your hyperplane. So the hard margin says that so the strictly the uh, if it is classified as a positive class or a negative class with a vector w then all the thing has to satisfy that particular thing okay so now hard margin so it is defined by w into x plus w is equal to 1 so w into x plus w b is equal to minus 1 so b is a constant or a bias value what we are going to assume so the width of hard margin is always 2 divided by mod of W. So, hard margin means strictly uh, should follow this particular equation to get the output label as Y or not Y. Okay. Now, for all the points okay, uh, not on the hyperplane, they will be safely in the wood class. Okay. So, which are not on the hyperplane, uh, not falling on the hyperplane, they will be there on the wood class. So, thus the Y values will either have, uh, will be greater than 1 or it will be less than 1. So, the points which are not falling on the hyperplane okay, will, will be either falling on one side or either falling on the either side. So, SVM algorithm finds a weight vector okay, for the features such that okay, there is a widest margin between the two categories. Okay. So, weight vector for the features such that always you get the widest margin between the two categories. So, computing SVM with these equations is a hill climbing process. So, in a convex space. So, that means See, we have high dimensional space. Okay? So, in high dimensional space, we are having lots of points. Okay? So, out of lots of points in the high dimensional space, we may take some subset of those points. So, that those subset of points, uh, we are calling it as a convex space. So, wherever they are going to lie in that particular space, that subset space, we are calling it as a convex space. So, that is actually going to reduce the memory requirements for your computation. So, how are by working with the points nearest to the classifying boundary only. Okay? 
है सो वॉट वी डू वी आर ट्राइंग टू वर्क आउट विद दो बॉन्ड्स विच आर लाइंग नियर दी क्लासीफाइंग बाउंड्री ओनली दैट मीन्स नियर दी हाइपर प्लेन और आर गैटस सो इट विच इज रेड्यूजिंग द नंबर ऑफ डेटा इंस्टेंसिस टू वर्क विद सो दिस अप्रोच रेड्यूज मेमोरी रिक्वायरमेंट एज वेल एज योर कंपिटेशन सो दिस इज एक्चुअली वी आर कॉलिंग इट एज अ कर्नल मेथड है सो दैट विल बी दिस इज अ कर्नल मेथड वॉट इज एक्चुअली यूज इन दी your svm so, so the kernel method it's a heart of your svm algorithm so most kernel algorithms are based on optimization in a convex space okay yeah? so when we take few points in a convex space so we have uh, data uh, space is reduced okay so search space is reduced so which are statist statistically well uh, founded so kernel stands for uh, core or germ and a fruit okay yeah? so core is so kernel means a core okay yeah? so kernel methods operate using a kernel trick so, so this trick is nothing but computing and working with inner products of only relevant pairs of data you have lots of pairs lots of feature spaces there in that feature space we only work out with the relevant data so that means we work out here in this case we work out with the data which is near to your support vector so less data less memory requirement less computation requirement so they do not need to compute all the data in a high dimensional feature space okay. so the kernel uh, trick okay so the kernel trick uh, makes algorithm much much less demanding in computational and memory resources so kernel methods achieve uh, this by learning from instances so they do not apply some standard computational logic to all the features of each input so they are applying okay, they are not applying the standard logic but just they are learning from the instance new and new training example they are going to learn this okay. so with a points which are lying near to the hyperplane so not with the points which are lying on the outside of the hyperplane so they instead they remember each training example and associate a weight representing its relevance okay. uh, we are uh, finding out the weights and every time we learn with a new training example so this is called as a uh, your instance based learning so where we learn from the instances or a new training example so several types of support vector models exist so some are linear some are polynomial okay rbf and uh, sigma okay so they like always here in this example we have seen a linear hyperplane so sometimes your hyperplane will be in this fashion okay so you may be having uh, even this way also it can separate okay even in this fashion fashion also it may it can even this fashion also it can separate so all the curves okay, they you may have any kind of your curve okay so all the curves will have equivalent equations okay so those equations okay so depend defines the polynomial or a curve okay so this may be with a rbf okay so the equation or a polynomial curve whatever you are having may be a polynomial curve it may be defining a rbf or a sigmoid function so this is similar like uh, here so this is similar like a uh, huge human being learn from their domains okay so their tough experience they remember the normal situations they are going to discard okay so svm has evolved to more flexible and able to tolerate some amount of your misclassification okay so the margins of separation between categories if it is to uh, the points whatever you are going to have okay uh, new instances you are going to have it is uh, may not fall on the hyperplane okay and may fall little uh, away from it so the for that we are calling it as a soft margin okay so here um, as a hard margin so if strictly obeying your equation Okay, so W X plus uh, B is equal to one, or W X plus B is equal to minus one. So that is a hard margin. If it is a little bit away from your equation, then it is called as a soft margin. Okay, so how ex exactly your SVM works is like, okay, so you can see the, the hyperplane there. So here, if any new instances, what are we getting? Okay, so suppose somewhere uh, your point is coming somewhere here. You calculate the distance between this and the support vector. and they calculate the distance of this point with this support vector okay then whichever near it is so this particular point is classified belonging to this class so like that suppose if you are getting any uh, point here so you measure the distance from this point to this one and this point to this one okay on the gutter line or if you are just like gutter line y b rows which is measure 
to the gutter line so it is equivalent to measuring distance from this okay so to whichever nearer it is so it is going to classify that particular point as a belonging to this class so that is why we always uh, have the, uh, this one okay so this way all the new instances new svm will be classified okay so this is actually very useful applied in lots of uh, cases and all so where will be uh, making the classification so svm works well even when the number of features is much larger than the instances so say it uh, suppose uh, example i am uh, trying to classify a particular disease i have a data of 10 patients okay so data of 10 patients so 10 patients are 10 instances okay for each patients i may have some set of features okay i may have 100 features okay so now features are more than the instances even in that case also svm works good okay so when uh, yeah sometimes whenever we draw the hyperplane uh, we try to uh, if you are getting the non-linear curve okay so uh, getting uh, making the classification linear is more easier than the non-linear but uh, you can also transform that uh, uh, to get the linear curve okay what we can do is you can do the transformations on the set of features available so then your uh, instead of non-linear curve will actually get a linear curve okay so svms are easy to understand so it is uh, very good for linear classifier so it works out with only relevant data so it is computationally efficient so these are the advantages of your svm so the drawbacks of your svm are it works only with the real numbers so it will not work with the uh, values like you have seen in the uh, forecasting weather and all okay enjoy sport like example sunny rainy and all those kind of things will not work out here always it is expecting to have a real numbers okay so it works only with binary classification so to have multi-class classification problem so you can make a series of cascaded svm to get around this particular constraint so training the svm is an inefficient and time consuming process for large data you need you need a lot of time uh, for the training okay for small data it works out but you need a lot uh, for large data it is taking a lot of time so it does not work well when there is much noise for small noise it is adjustable for much noise in the data uh, this is not going to work out okay and uh, it is because it has to compute a uh, soft margin so already it has done a hard margin by drawing a hard, uh, hard margin and the cutter so for soft margin it needs to draw a new soft uh, margin so where the equation is a little bit uh, away okay, where the new margin is a little bit away from that so soft margins has to be created so that is uh, again a tedious task okay so less data less noise it's fine if you have large, large amount of noise so then more soft margins have to be created so that is difficult okay so we can conclude that so svm is a machine learning technique by classifying high dimensional data into two classes okay so it creates a hyperplane with large amount of separation between two classes okay so if you are not um, if the classifier is made linear by transforming the original features of input data into your new features okay so svm use a kernel methods okay so to reduce the amount of memory consumed and uh, to do the less computations okay so svms are applied in text mining spam filtering and outlier decision so here we stop with the 